So, this is Key back with another video because God has been dealing with me on something. He does it so quick when he does do it. It's like with God, it's like hurry up and wait sometime because <laughs> I'll be like, hurry up, God, give me the answer, give me the answer. And I don't literally say, hurry up, God, give me the answer, but that's like my anxiousness and my flesh. You know, this is why we need to crucify this flesh. Don't do it literally, though. So anyway, like in my flesh, I'm like, I need the answer. I need the answer. And you're waiting and you're waiting as soon as you forget about it. You know what I'm saying? Hurry up turns into wait. And next thing you know, God gives you a quick answer. But anyway, I am driving from work on my way home, which is less than a 10 minute drive. Okay. And God just dawned something on me that I wanted to share with you guys. Now, around the time that I have been um, looking for God and more than one perspective you know i was listening to people talk about manifesting i was listening to people talk about manifesting um what you want right and i was wondering is that how you do it god like i'm you know and i go to god about everything i have questions for i don't just like let christians or dogmatic teachers of the law tell me, oh, don't do this and don't do that. And no, 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 no. I take everything to God. You know, sometimes you got to ignore the devil and sometimes you got to hear what he got to say and take it to the Lord so that God can divide it rightly because the devil will give you 99% of the truth because he knows that 99% of the truth is a lie. Anytime the truth is, anytime truth is omitted from truth, then it's a lie. Okay, so that's another bombshell. All right, anyway, <laughs> I hope this video is not too dark because I forgot to turn the light on. So I said all that to say, um, yeah, I've been seeking God in some other ways in forms of you know different perspectives or whatever because the religious way that I had first come to God seemed like it was not working for me and I was living with a lot of fear a lot of anxiety a lot of doubt um, a lot of faithlessness you know a lot of non-trustfulness and I you know how you feel like you've been asking God for things but your flesh just rises up and chokes it because you know we just get impatient with God and we start seeking other and avenues not realizing that we are seeking outside of God but that's why you know um we're always in safety when we decide to take whatever we end up with all the way back to Jesus okay take it back to Jesus if you're not if you got some type of information and you don't know you're being convinced of it and you don't know if it's really of God or not because if you go to uh, dogmatic teaching teachers of the law they will tell you one thing which is not convincing because it's going to one extreme and then you will go to the other extreme of asking people who cannot give godly advice and you end up going to another extreme and we need balance in our lives. You feel me? So um, I was just asking God, you know, how do I manifest? Do Is it OK to manifest, you know, because I've been listening to people with these new age point of views, you know, saying that um we have to manifest what we want not by asking for it but by um like don't ask the universe verse for it don't tell the universe what what you want because you know you're that's saying to the universe that you don't have it something like that it's hard for me to repeat it because it don't stick if it ain't from god so you know, I've come to the conclusion that it's not totally the truth because 
And I said, Lord, you know, you spoke in the Bible things into existence. You said, speak that which is, you speak that which isn't as if it is. So this has some truth with it. But God, by via Holy Spirit, gave me revelation when I was reading the scripture that talks about, you know, speaking things into existence. Um, it said that the Lord, God, our Father, Jesus, the Master, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, God, it said that he spoke those things that were not as if they were. So we think that we can do that. Okay, we think that because we have revelation that we are gods or we are God, that we have the authority to speak those things that were not as if they were in order for those things to manifest. And God is giving me revelation, beloved, that Yes, the only reason why you are God is because you are one with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit by faith because you welcome me, okay? Because you are a part of one body, which is my body, and we all belong together, you know? So claiming to be God, you have to be very careful with that. I um, put up a video um, which basically says, I am God, right? And basically just giving an understanding that um, the recognition that you are God is to get you to really um, think about how you view yourself and how and and what accusation you're bringing against our creator by viewing yourself in this way or that way um and to understand that um that we are a part of god okay and disobedience is a part is apart from god we are a part of God and disobedience is apart from God and that's evil. God is all, is in all, and um, he is omnipresent, is all, is in all, and is with all. Okay, so we think that, okay, that must mean that he is evil too. Some people, that crossed my mind, that crossed other people's mind too, honey. And God said, nope, evil is that thing that separates you from me, like cancer. That is, it. let's say you have cancer in one of your body parts. You would have to get rid of that body part if if that cancer is strong enough or contagious enough or whatever, however you use it, you know, the, the terms, scientific terms, if, if you are, your whole body is in danger of that cancer spreading and destroying the whole body, in order to save the body, you must cut off that body part. And even though we are part of God, the reason why we end up separate from God is only if he has to do something so traumatic as cutting us off from the body because of our disobedience and because we do not welcome him and, you know, and his law and we don't delight ourselves in him. You don't love your own body. You got to go. <laughs> so anyway, God's um, made me think about also the reason why we don't speak things into existence as if they were because he said that's what he does. And if anyone does do that, I'm not speaking against you entirely because if God feels like he wants to give someone the authority and you know that you have the authority to speak things into existence um, as if they were, then go ahead. You might be in a season where you can speak those things into existence, those things that's not as if they were, you know, and manifest those things that way. But um, you will be able to do it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, honey, and not all the way on your own apart from God. Okay, sometimes we separate our own selves from God from thinking we can do things apart from God. If you are God, then how are you going to do what you do apart from God? Boo! 
Let's get it on straight, okay? Let's screw our heads on the right way. Sometimes, you know, you know how you put a top on a jar after you done unscrewed it, you screw the top back on and sometimes it's not on there, right? So you got to unscrew it and then screw it back on. We got to do this with our minds sometimes because we be, we be a little bit off. It don't be making no sense. So God is saying, what you do as my children, okay, with me, not being apart from me, what you do is ask. He said, those who ask, receive. He said, what you supposed to be doing is seeking because those who seek will find. All right. He said, what you're supposed to be doing is knocking. And I will be the one to open these doors for, for you. And you get to walk through open doors, not bust your head open, trying to run through closed doors by acting like you got all by yourself, separate from the father who is the head of the body that you are a part of, the God body. Thus, why are you going to call yourself God if you are manifesting apart from God? And who is God? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And who is the Father? The Father is the one who created us. Who is the Son? Jesus Christ. And the Father has given Jesus his name, which is above all names. So you can call God anything you like. But Jesus is the name above all names. I mean, I can call on God by calling on, you know, my sister in Christ. I can call on God by calling, you know, um, the, any servant of God that did not separate themselves from, uh, from the body of Christ, did not separate themselves from God. I can call on God by asking, you know, uh, a fellow, you know, body member <laughs> a question or, or can you do something for me or whatever? You know what I'm saying? Because they are a part of the body. And of course, I would have to get permission from the head. You know, it's the head that tells the other body parts what to do. You know that, right? Your hands ain't going to move until your brain gives instructions to the rest of your body to give your hands the ability to move. You know what I'm saying? So if I am going to my brother or my sister and asking them for something, it has to be because God moved me to do so. You feel me? And so you got to be aware of these things in this perspective in order for you to operate inside the body of Christ and not outside the body of Christ. Who is God? The father, the creator, the one who sent his only begotten son on this earth to die for our sins and gave him the name above all names, which is Jesus Christ, which means savior, deliverer, redeemer, prince of peace, almighty counselor, Jesus. I don't care how you say Jesus or what language you decide to say Jesus in. People want to fight talking about, yeah, well, it's this Yahweh and yeah, it's, you know, this or that. I don't care what language you say Jesus in. Jesus is Jesus. And that is the name above all names. You feel me? So you cannot separate yourself from Jesus and think that you are a part of the body of God. Because once you've separated yourself from Jesus, you have separated yourself from your creator who sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. And the only way he was able to do that, Jesus is by the Holy Spirit. You cannot separate yourself from the Holy Spirit and think that you're going to manifest anything righteous in your life. It won't be righteous. Listen, the, re the Bible says that we need to bring our lamentations to God. I mean, we need to be able to lament. God says... He instructs us to humble ourselves and pray. Why does he say humble yourself? It's because we are so prideful into thinking that all we have to do is speak things into existence and it is done by God. Like God is our servant and we are not the servants. Humble yourself and pray mean to pray the way Jesus prayed in the garden of Gethsemane. When Jesus said, Lord, please, he begged him, you know. 
Lord, please take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will be done, but your will be done. He sought the will of the Father. He came to him and asked him, right? And what did he receive? He received the strength to drink that bitter cup that he asked God to take from him. And so we think that when we ask, we receive exactly what we want and how we want it. And we don't acknowledge the fact that God knows what's best for us because we too busy running around here talking about I'm God, I'm God, I'm God, son, I'm God, son. Dude, dude, I, I get that you're God, but you're not God. Okay. All by yourself, apart from the body of Christ. You need to humble yourself because God is the head and he is the one that moves you. And if you are moving by yourself, you are separating yourself from the body and therefore you are not God. So let's get it straight. So, you know, somebody said beseech to beseech God means to beg him. It takes humility for some people to just beg God for what they desire. Beg him. Keep asking him, Lord, please, 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 Lord, please. Until God finally gives you an answer, yes or no. And then you will be able to receive his yes or no, or maybe so, or you got to wait a little bit longer, or he ain't going to tell you how long you got to wait, but you got to wait. All right. We'll be able to receive that if we came to God in humility like Jesus did. Lord, please do this for me. Please do this for me. Nevertheless, not my will be done, but thy will be done. So all this manifesting what you want, if you want money, you got to manifest it, you got to will it, you got to name it and claim it and, you know, and, and all this stuff. How is that humbling yourself and praying like Jesus prayed? Never, the, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. How are you seeking the will of God? The Bible says, ask, seek, and knock. Ask, and you shall receive the will of God and not your own. Seek, and you shall find what God wants for your life. You shall find spiritual wisdom and understanding of his purpose in your life. And you shall find out how he really feels about you and his plans to prosper you, not to harm you, but to give you hope in the future, even if that does not look like what you asking him for. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And he said, knock and the door will be open. Hey, what door is that? God said, do not lean upon your own understanding. So guess what? We need to stop leaning upon our own understanding as to what this door is going to look like and how it's going to look. We got to knock, we got to ask and seek for the door that God has for us. Okay? Because you want doors to open, that's not your door to open. Okay? So you got to knock on God's door in order to get to your door. You got to knock on God's will in order for his doors to the kingdom to be open for you. And that means you got to shut your mind off and just let it be ready for whatever God has to offer. He said he will bless you over and beyond what you've asked for. That doesn't mean he's going to give you what you asked for, how you asked for it, when you asked for it. He said he's going to bless you over and beyond what you asked for. So whatever it is you're asking for, a husband, an apple, a car, he's whatever he's going to give you, don't, don't think in your imagination what it's going to look like, how it's going to come and all this, or even if you're going to get it in that way. No, God, God is going to bless you beyond what you can even imagine. So your imagination is limiting and blocking God. And what did God say to Jesus? I mean, what did Jesus say to uh, Peter? He said, get thee behind me, Satan, for you are a stumbling block, for you only have mere human concerns. 
So dude, like this is how, this is what we're doing, like what Peter did. And we need to learn like Peter because Peter repented and then God built the church upon the rock. You feel me? So Peter stepped up his game, but he had to be humble to receive that rebuke from Jesus. Get thee behind me, Satan. You got to be humble enough to receive a loving rebuke like that. Hey, for real. Okay. So <coughs> we are stumbling blocks to the good and perfect will that God has for us. When we call ourselves asking him and getting mad with the waiting process, so we feel like we're going to go into new age thinking and we're going to be gods and claim to be gods and we're going to act like God and we're going to speak those things that are not as if they were without the authority of God in Christ Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit, all of that. No authority to be doing what you're doing, but you're still doing it. And then wonder why when you manifest these things into your life, they look like the angel of light when they walk through the door, your door. And then you find yourself trying to kick them out because they ain't no angel of light. They ain't no angel of light, honey. Those things that you're manifesting end up causing harmful causations. They end up, you end up in manifesting things in your life where at some point the, you know, what hits the fan. Okay. And you realize it ain't what you thought it was going to be. And you realize sometimes you realize right away or sometimes 10 years down the line, I don't care when, if it ain't from God, there's going to be some harmful causation. If it ain't from God, there's going to be some painful toil in keeping that job that you manifested. If it ain't from God, it's going to be some painful toil trying to keep that money that you manifested because you're going to have family members and all types of people running to you trying to get that money, trying to rob you of something that you ain't get from God in the first place. Or if you got, if it was yours, you got it in the wrong timing where the wrong people was in your life. Wrong timing. So do you understand and see why it is so important for us to humble ourselves and pray to ask for what we want? These new age teachers and gurus or people that claim to be gurus, they're literally telling us that we can't ask for what we want because we're telling the universe that we don't have it. <laughs> and we, it's not faith. It's not confidence or so you want me to be arrogant and prideful and step out of the will of God and, uh, and separate myself from God to get what I want by, by still calling myself a God? Come on now. And then you got Jesus cut all out the scenario because you don't want to believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You want to believe in him as a prophet when he is the son of God and he is God. He is God. He is one with God, just like we are one with God unless we separate ourselves from him. Then we're not one with God no more. Then we can't run around talking about I'm God because you're not. You're separate from God because God cannot give move you if you cut off. Your brain can't tell your hand what to do if you cut off or your hand is cut off. All communication is cut off. And then you end up decaying, rotting, and dying, separate from God, and wonder what hell is? That's got to be hell. To be separate from God, dying from, living from God, and dying from God. Come on now. From uh, uh, dying apart from God, living apart from God and dying apart from God is what I was trying to say. Ooh, I just went all in, honey. So, yes, we despise the waiting process and we start looking for avenues. We'd be like, OK, forget about God. I'm God. So what I'm going to do is start manifesting my blessings. If I think it long enough, if I will it long enough, I better not ask. I better not seek. All I got to do is power thinking into existence and just take whatever shows up as the angel of light. And that once that light is stripped from it, you find out is a is a angel or messenger of satan okay giving you gifts giving you answering your prayers and giving you what you've been asking 
what you giving you what you've been asking for no we i mean some people ask the devil okay but this is the way you ask the devil by not asking god <laughs> So you have to ask God, you are literally doing what you set out not to do by, at, you know, you're, you're setting out not to ask, but to tell the universe what you need and the universe is supposed to bow down to you and be like, okay, master, I see you, God. Uh-uh, it don't work that way. You have to be in sync with the universe and what the universe is equipped and how the universe is equipped to take care of your needs via instruction from your God creator who created you. Okay, so you can't be telling the universe what to do, calling yourself speaking it into the universe and the universe has to do whatever you want it to do. It, it, it just don't go. It, it don't go down like that. OK, so I hope I made myself clear. Remember, we have to ask that we shall receive the will of God and his good and perfect will for us. His plans to prosper us and not to harm us, but to give us hope in the future. Sometimes he let us go through valleys that will hurt, but not cause us any harm. OK, because sometimes growing pains hurt. All right. So we ask that we shall receive. We seek that we shall find. Find what? What do you want to find? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You want to find Jesus. Okay? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. In whatever language you know to say Jesus, that is the name above all names. So we give him the highest praise, which is hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay? I just screamed all up in your ears. All right. We're going to be all right. Hallelujah. I hope you felt that. I hope that punched you all up in the gut. Hallelujah. Highest praise to the name of Jesus in whatever language you know it. With a J or without a J. How about that? Knock and the door shall be open. Now, what doors do you want to open? You want to open the doors to God, good and perfect will in your life. Not the door that you are being drawn to by your flesh and, and distaste and despise for God's timing and will in your life. Because he ain't giving you what you want when you want it, how you think you should have it. He's going to give you over and beyond what you can even imagine. Boo, he got you. Chill. Be patient. Fall back. Allow God to move in your life. Now, I'm talking to you like this and I sound bossy and everything, but guess what? This is how I talk to myself because I am the worst one. Okay, this is why God has given me this message. I am the worst one. And I got to, this is how God got to talk to me to keep reminding me to stay on track. So I'm going to talk to you the way the Lord talked to me in love okay i love you have a blessed day pick up these pearls and rock them boo boo and i'll be praying for you if you want me to pray for you when it comes to certain things i am willing to do that just leave it in the comment section and i will find scripture to pray for you and and i will ask god and seek god for you okay with you all right we can touch and agree all right. So anyway, till next time, don't forget to subscribe, uh, subscribe. Don't forget to comment. Don't forget to share this video with somebody that you think it's going to bless. Okay. I want to be friends with you on YouTube. So go ahead and subscribe later.